In recent years, Austrian politics has been torn between moderates and nationalists. Right-wing parties have been strengthening their position by playing on fears of mass immigration from Muslim countries. But authorities have hit back by prosecuting the leader of the right-leaning Freedom Party of Austria. Well, now the question is whether this move sacrifices people's freedom of speech. In 2008, this woman became a figure of hate among much of Europe's Muslim community. Suzanne Winters told her fellow members at the right-leaning Freedom Party of Austria that if the Prophet Muhammad were alive today, he would be considered a child molester. Austria, she warned, faced an Islamic immigration tsunami. Over the past 10 years, we've become the third largest party in Austria, so I know people agree with us. Mainstream parties are trapped by political correctness. We don't play on fears. We raise the genuine concerns of normal people. But Austria's politicians and its president were swift in their condemnation. A two-year suspended sentence for inciting religious hatred and a 24,000 euro fine followed. And Austria's Muslims feel bolstered by her punishment, a victory in the fight against what they call an increasingly dangerous trend spreading across the continent. The new cultural racism is Islamophobia. In this sense, we are concerned about the situation in Europe, but especially also in our country, Austria. And Austria does have a reputation here. Until his death last year, the controversial and far-right figure Jörg Haider was its most famous MP. But Europe's torn over its sensitivity on Islam. Supporters of the Netherlands politician Geert Wilders described Britain's decision to refuse him entry over his anti-Islamic rhetoric as disgusting and cowardly. And in Germany, a lack of media coverage of the murder of Mawa El Shabini sparked outrage and her native Egypt. Tarafa's wife converted to Islam in 1989. She renounced her German citizenship precisely because she says Austria enjoys a much better relationship with Muslims. Very much appreciate how we have a basis for something like an institutionalized dialogue here in Austria. And this basis works out quite well, especially in situations of crisis. And I think we have seen it in the case of Susanne Winter. But others saw Winter's case not as an attack on Islam, but on freedom of speech. A German alternative news website backed her and, for similar reasons, reprinted the controversial Danish cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad two years ago, saying it was fighting to protect traditional European values. Islam um, oppresses women, um, abuses children for hatred education, um, kills homosexuals and um, is persecuting Jews. We feel that all these uh, very uh, archaic ideas are very much against what we understand as human rights. Built in 1979 on the outskirts of Vienna, this Islamic center is one of only two mosques in all of Austria that obviously looks like a mosque. The rest are housed in ordinary looking buildings. Surprising in a small country where its 400,000 strong Muslim community makes up almost 5% of the total population. And the likelihood is that that figure will continue to grow. Austria and all of Europe is at a crossroads in its relationship with Islam. An absence of a visible architectural symbolism belies deep and potentially explosive emotions on both sides. Alice Hibbert, RT, Vienna, Austria.